How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 11, making the missing valve rod and painting the flywheel. I decided to make the valve rod from a piece of 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel. I could have used a piece of mild steel for this, but the obvious advantages are stainless steel will not rust. The only disadvantage I can think of is stainless steel is more difficult to machine and more difficult to thread. It's a harder metal and it's very easy to work hard in it, in which case it becomes very difficult to machine. According to the drawing, I need to cut a thread on one end of this rod quarter BSF, which I do believe is quarter by 26 threads per inch. I'm going to use some lubricant on this. This is tapping compound, which should make it easier. I don't actually do much threading of quarter BSF. It's a little bit of a redundant size for me. And this die is terrible. Not only is it very, very old, it's rusty, and it's too far gone to cut this thread on the piece of stainless steel. So for me the solution is simple, I just use a different thread pitch. So I used a quarter by 32 die for this, and it's a model engineering thread, an ME thread. I have a few dies of this size, and they're in good condition because I use them a lot. Quarter inch by 32 threads per inch is a very popular size for steam engine unions. So it will be okay for this. It's not a highly stressed part anyway. It's just to hold the valve fork onto the valve spindle. Once I'd cut the thread and measured it with the ruler to make sure it was the right length, I reversed the die in the die holder. And with the die reversed in the die holder like this, you can cut the thread much closer to the end. Working from the drawing, I cut the piece of rod to length. And this is the other end of the rod. And for part of the length of the rod, I have to cut it down to quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm using steam oil as lubricant, just to make the cutting easier and to get a better finish. This quarter of an inch diameter part of the valve rod actually fits into the gunmetal fitting at the top of the valve chest, and it helps stabilise the movement of the valve rod when the engine's running. And it needs to be dimensionally accurate that's why I drilled the end of it with a centre drill so I could put a live centre in to support it. The next section of the valve rod needs to be threaded and this is to take some lock nuts to hold the valve in the correct position and I'm threading this 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch which seems to match the threads inside the lock nuts. I've opened up the die as much as I can and this method is explained in a previous video. That way it doesn't tear the metal it cuts it neatly, and if I want to make the thread smaller, I just tighten the die against the thread, but as it turns out, this one is okay just as it is. I found it ironic and a bit amusing that when I'd finished this job, my finger was bleeding, and the lathe isn't even going round. So these machines can be quite brutal, even when they're not spinning round. Once I'd cut the thread by hand, I then reversed the lathe to move the die down so I could remove it. I ended up with a very clean thread. As you can see, the nut goes on. It's not slack and it's not tight. It's fairly good. It would appear that my mixture of superheated steam oil, machine oil and rapeseed oil is also a good lubricant for cutting metal. Needless to say, before I assembled these parts, I gave them yet another coating of lubricant, as you can see here. It's always very important to make sure that everything is lubricated so the parts move very freely. And I'm really pleased with this, it's not worn, it's quite tight, quite firm, yet it moves in and out of the valve chest very freely. I'm going to fit the valve in position and have a look at the travel of the valve and make sure everything's okay. I would think that ideally, once the valve's fitted in place, there should be an equal amount of thread at the top of the lock nuts and at the bottom. I'm going to try the steam chest on the actual cylinder Everything looks quite good. There's a bit of thread still showing at each end of the lock nuts. And as I tighten up the gland nut, it really does feel good. Very firm, but very, very free. Nothing's binding. If only all steam engines were like this one. When I first bought this engine, I gave it a cursory glance. Well, no, actually, I gave it a really good looking at. I was more concerned with the geometry, that the fact that the valve chest was parallel to the bed, and the rest of the parts lined up, which they did. It's that time again, the end of the video, and this is the part even I've been looking forward to. It's called Painting the Flywheel. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.